pounding that snake's nose, she's still holding the ruby in her other hand. Maker's panties, I was so proud. Oh, uh, um... Ah, shit. They, they're still holding it. Sorry. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. What are you doing? Pulling a barb. Oh, okay. A barb? Tradition in the Lords of Fortune, from one of our old members, Barv. Good guy, but like most of us, his plans went sideways a lot. Bad blood among your crew's not good for morale, but there's not always time for big, drawn-out apologies. So, when one of us screws up and we know we've screwed up, we do a quick ten to put it right. Pulling a Barv. <laughs> I'm glad the Lords of Fortune have Tarsh's back. Oh, Tarsh isn't the first non-binary member of the Lords. Really? It was a little before your time, but Horlicks was one of ours. Huh. Bastard looked better than I did in a dress or pants. And out of them, too. Y'all! Y'all smoking crack! Something is wrong with you people! Any reason you can't just apologize? Sometimes people say, oops, sorry, and hope that fixes it. But they just want to get the whole thing over with. Trust me, I know. But pulling a barb, you sweat a little. Makes you think about it a little more. Shows the other person you mean it. What if they mean it when they say they're sorry, though? And that's the other reason. Some people mess up and get all dramatic. They make it about them. Oh, you know, I didn't mean it right. I'd never do that on purpose. They feel so bad about it that it's on everyone else to smooth it over and make them feel better. Oh, oh, okay, yes, some people might do that. Pulling a barb puts it on the person who screwed up. They made the mess, they fix it, done. <laughs> God damn it! You can't make this shit up! Here, vegetables. Thank you. So, I'm non-binary. Who the fuck starts a conversation like that? I just sat down! Please listen. You're not alone. Whatever's out there, we'll face it together, I promise. Together. I... I could kiss you right now. I'm going to kiss you right now. Why are you gay? Emmerich, you clearly find talking about dragons boring. What? How? Who doesn't like dragons? Aren't you curious why Tash likes them as much as you like necromancy? The question crossed my mind. And maybe Emric could help demystify magic, Tosh. See what I mean? That is not how you speak to adults. That is how you speak to a toddler when you are teaching them to share their Optimus Prime toy with their little brother. Okay, guys, so I thought I had seen it all, especially with the whole Dustborn and Concord situation, but I must say that this is a whole new level of weird. I can't even consider this bad writing. This is not bad writing. We are far past that. This is a Marxist re-education camp. I'm going to re-educate you and condescend to you and lecture you for five minutes straight about my satanic ideology that also happens to be a mental illness that I want the entire world to know about and the made-up rules that go along with it. It's cooking. Gaming should have never gone mainstream, guys. I just, I miss the days when gaming was a predominantly male-oriented space. We had peak storytelling. Storytelling that wasn't at all concerned with race, gender, or sex. We had storytelling that simply focused on entertainment and gameplay and fun. I miss when games were fun. But as for Dragon Age, it seems that it's another game that's on its way to the bankruptcy chart block because judging by the numbers that it's pulling in they may not be a bioware in the near future right now i have on steam db we have concurrent players we're looking at dragon age the veil guard where even is it right now it dropped there it is it dropped at 17th place let's go ahead and refresh see if that makes a difference 17th place right now this is like one day after launch Sitting at 66,000 concurrent viewers, and on the surface, it's like, oh, 66,000 people? That's actually, eh, you know, it's a lot of people. But for a game with this kind of massive budget of, I mean, we're estimating 300 million plus 
budget for this game. This has been in development hell for such a long time. They put a lot of time and resources into this game. There's no way it's going to be making its budget back with these numbers. Now, just for comparison, let's look at Baldur's Gate 3, which is honestly sitting almost close, like 62,000. This is only 4,000 less concurrent viewers right now. Baldur's Gate 3 has been out for a long time, like a year, over a year. And it is still sitting at almost the same number of concurrent players as Dragon Age The Veil Guard, which was supposedly a highly anticipated game. I mean, it was for a lot of Dragon Age fans. Now, a lot of them just opted not to play because they're disappointed. But this is a highly anticipated release that is sitting at almost identical concurrent numbers to Baldur's Gate 3, which, mind you, now, again, you think that, like, 70,000 peak concurrent sounds impressive. Well, look at Baldur's Gate Three with their all-time peak concurrent being almost 900,000. By the way, IGN also had something to say about Dragon Age. And while we've been asked by the devs not to spoil specifically who I'm talking about here, as a non-binary person myself, I hope the world can see now what's really going on out here, because it's getting ridiculous. Veilguard includes some of the most authentic representation of coming to terms with general gender stuff and having to navigate your family's reaction to it I've yet to see in a game. It doesn't feel like an after-school special or like I'm being pandered to. It's quite well handled, and finding out that the writer for this character is non-binary themselves did not surprise me at all. If we never get another Dragon Age, at least it got to go out on a high note. I'm not upset with y'all because I know you're mentally ill. You see guys, this demonic mindset, this sick twisted mindset of wanting to see yourself in each and every single project because it will somehow bar you from being able to connect with the characters on screen is simply peak racism. At first I thought that maybe we could solve this problem by simply not buying these games but now I'm starting to think that we might need prayer on our side because these people clearly need Jesus. The Bible says that we rest not against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities so there are clearly some demonic spirits that are behind the video game industry as of late and the unfortunate thing is these people they don't even realize what they're doing i mean guys this, this is one of the first games i've ever encountered whereby they basically force you to be trans gender identity options establishes transgender identity and unlocks do new dialogue options in future conversations. I love who I am. It feels good to see the real me. I mean, every single option makes me transgender. I, I, there's no option not to be transgender. It says this is, makes me trans, this one does, and this one. That, I don't know why I, I have to be trans, guys. I can't, I, I, guys, I'm, I, I don't know what to do force transgender this is what donald trump was talking about i'm getting there it feels good to see the real me it took a while for me to figure out why the face staring back from the mirror felt wrong oh brother this guy stinks so in closing guys pray for these people and continue to vote with your wallets we do have one more thing please <laughs> great I want to Kratos. Kratos. Depends on the weapon and the man.